I think this is your favorite bridge. Wait. Okay, so I haven't quite gotten my air conditioning installed in here yet, but if you notice here, it's currently 84 degrees in this bus, and that is warmer than cold. I've got sort of a ventilation blower that I hooked up down here. It's a pretty small one. It was designed for ventilating the engine compartment of a boat, or like a bilge blower, and it basically pipes a little bit of air up through this half of the ventilation that comes out here. But I was realizing I need a much higher power um, blower to move a significant amount of air to actually ventilate this whole bus. So I got to thinking, do I have any blowers? I could buy a bathroom vent fan or something maybe. But then I remembered, up here in the front, this bus has these airline style little things with uh, open and closable vents that allow airflow to go in and out of here. They don't connect to the outside, but the blowers are up here. There's one on this side and one on that side. So I lifted my seat elevator up all the way, popped off that cover, that was up there, and I found this. Ta-da! It's a giant squirrel cage blower. I don't know how many CFM this thing is, but it's designed to del to or it's designed to ventilate uh, half of the bus because there's one of these on each side, and it's got a pretty beefy ball door, uh, two pull motor. Uh, rated for 27 volts at 3.7 amps. And I was trying to figure out the best way to get air moving around in here, and I determined that pressurized ventilation is the way to go. I would like to pull air from underneath in the luggage bay area, force it in here, and then have it go out the little vent that's in the bathroom in the back. So I'm going to go to one of the big box home improvement stores right now, see if I can find something to adapt this square thing to eh, maybe not dryer vent size, but basically just find some sort of adapter I can put on here. Then I'm going to mount, once again, this is not what you think it is. The well water here is very high in iron content. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna cut a small vent in the floor right here. So we're gonna pull air from down below, which ultimately pulls air from outside and forces it up in here. And what that's gonna do is basically pressurize this whole area and force air all the way back. In the back by the bathroom, there is an exit ventilation little flap or something like that. So I think that's gonna work quite well. Nice thing is this didn't cost me anything and it was already in here. Um, and it's already set up to run on 24 volts. So I will be adding a separate circuit here. It claims 3.7 amps while running. I'm sure it's gonna surge to like 10 or 15 or something. So I'm probably gonna put that on like I don't know, 15, 20 amp circuit or something like that. Put it here in our fuse panel. This thing can handle uh, 30 amps per channel. I forget what the combined is, but anyways. So yeah, gonna cut a hole in the floor. It goes right down into an area where there's plenty of room to mount that thing. And I think we're gonna do that. I'm not sure what kind of ventilation ducting to use, but based on the size of the rotating cage in here, Oh, do we have, oh, there's two cages. There's one on each side. Yeah, there we go. So this thing's gonna move a lot of air. I'm gonna go find something to adapt onto that and then base how I install it on that. I would like to use flexible round ducting if I can, because trying to box in rectangular stuff and put it through the floor reminds me of annoying. But anyways, we're gonna go see what we can find. My coffee cup is apparently squealing at me. Okay, so we're powering right along here. I haven't been filming much of this because I need to get the ventilation set up in here ASAP. But I've got this thing, which I'm gonna mount on the floor. You can see all the way through to the outside. I've got that luggage bay door open. This is gonna mount on the bottom. And then I've got a blower. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I filmed a clip earlier. Um, that we harvested that's gonna move a lot of air. So it's basically gonna come in through here. 
and then pressurize the inside of the bus and flow out through the back. So anyways, I'm gonna go down below before it starts raining, get this thing attached. I'm just doing this in segments between rainstorms and uh, yeah, good stuff. So I covered up the inverter with cardboard. As you can see, we got a little bit of vacuuming to do down here still, but here's our vent. Uh, blower's mounted right there. For some reason, I was envisioning inside that this was gonna be over further, but I had to put it between these two supports and this lands right in the middle of that desk up there. I could have put it potentially over here, but that space underneath the shelf, I think I'm gonna be putting something else right there. So anyways, um, we've got this thing attached now. It's in here good and solid. Um, all I need to do now is I've got another one of these. I need to adapt it to the front of this blower. It shouldn't be too hard to do. And then I've got some um, ducting that will run from here over to there. I didn't quite realize it was gonna be right over the inverter and all my battery connections. So I might have to run some fabric over the top of that because I got some metal ducting because I wanted it to be fairly rigid. But uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. I, I'll do something though, because I definitely don't want a big metal tube going over all this stuff. But anyways, uh, got the big squirrel cage blower over here. This thing runs on 24 volts. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna continue on here before the rain comes back and uh, see where we get. All right, that actually turned out pretty well. It sticks up over the floor just a tiny bit. I'm gonna use a mallet to uh, flatten that out. And then I've got some uh, really good quality metal flashing tape we're gonna put around there so we can make sure all the bugs stay out. I mean, obviously there's other holes down here I still have to plug, and also those over there. Normally the, uh, the bottom of this is closed up, but yeah, anyways. So yeah, we're looking pretty good. Sweet. Okay, so I think I got lucky. This thing's powered up right now and running. It's nowhere near the flow level that I thought it was, but that's fine. It's still moving a pretty good amount of air. I thought it was gonna try and blow all this stuff off of here and just be absolutely insane. But as you can probably hear, it's just kind of putzing along there. And uh, might be able to see the squirrel cage spinning there. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, this is perfect. This is gonna keep a constant flow of air at a pretty good volume coming in here. Yeah. Pardon the lo-fi music that's playing over there, but we're working on the wiring now. I uh, I determined that I'm just gonna get a cover that goes over the top of this to keep stuff from falling down there. And this little lip that sticks up isn't too big of a deal. So I used the hot glue gun to seal all this up and uh, even plugged up this other hole right here. But I'm working on the wiring right now. Um, this thing pulls almost no power at all. So I'm gonna be able to wire it directly to one of my little smart relay boards here and we should be good, so yeah. Oh, by the way, here's our grid power distribution for now. I found this thing about a week ago. Each one of these are circuit breakers, which is super handy. Uh, there's certain circuits in this bus that can never be plugged into the inverter, like the chassis battery charger and the inverter battery charger and stuff like that. So having this thing in here and then my big power monitor right here is super handy. I can kill the entire thing or kill each circuit and each one has its own circuit protection. So anyways, um, I'm gonna get to wiring this up. Okay, I think we got everything all going here. This thing's running. We use one of these relays. These are rated at like 10 amps or something like that at 30 volts, so I think we should be good. Um, I do, however, still need to label a lot of these circuits. Um, it's our 12 volt panel, 24 volt panel. But anyways, oh, also this is kind of a temporary thing. This uh, plugs into the pump that operates this sink that just kind of comes out right here. So this, I didn't want to actually install it because it's only going to be here for a short amount of time. But anyways, um, yeah, something, sweet. Mmm, airflow. Just for funsies, let's see how much power this thing's actually pulling. We'll zero this out. There we go, it's pretty good. And we will turn on our ventilation blower. Looks like about an amp. Looks like it surges to about six amps maybe, depending on how quickly this thing registers. But yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, it looks like five or six amps. And I put a 10 amp fuse in here. 
So I think that should be good. Cool. The, uh, the blower itself says it's rated at 3.97 amps. And I'm assuming there's a little bit of back pressure that they're calculating on that fan. So it's running under load. Um, it said it was rated at 27 volts though. And we're running about 24, actually. We're at 26.2 right now. You can see right there. Ew, gross. <laughs> it's a dishwasher drain. <laughs> um, but yeah, all right, cool. Well, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this setup. Oh yeah, also, this here is just the temporary uh, drain from that sink pump. This is gonna go away as soon as I actually get the plumbing installed. All right, we are out here today to get the rest of my stuff out of this van and uninstall a couple of components that this thing has been sold. Decided it's time to send this thing down the river. I'm gonna pull the automatic door openers out here. And then, I can't remember if there's, oh, there's my shower chair. Some other random stuff. And we got a table in here, some cabinet, cabinets, random wood pellets on the floor. All right, cool. Oh, that's where my other small TV with the wall mount went. It's like we've got a couple of the movie posters in here. There's my heat pump. Yeah, so the control board has already been removed from this thing. It's going to be used on a friend's vehicle. Ah, oh, yes, the manager. I built this thing years and years ago so I could drive a side-by-side uh, -side razor <laughs> at a friend's property. <laughs> it's the manager. But the idea is you just push the pedals with this thing. <laughs> so I think, pull these. Yeah, that opens. All right, cool. I only had one of the proper pins, so I just drove a bolt through here. So it's got a bunch of tension on it right now. So I think if I release these, left hand thread, I think. Yeah. I think if I loosen these, we should be able to get this off of here. Oh, I guess all we have to do is completely unscrew this and then it will just open. Hey, hey. Wow, that was adjusted perfectly. Oh, I guess I have sockets right here. <laughs> Probably be a little bit better for this. Here we have our door actuators, and oh, are these through bolted? Yes, and there's freaking nylox on the inside. Ugh, that's annoying. Um, hmm. So you ever see something and then you wonder how they put it together? So you can't get to these bolts because this is on the way. So these two bolts have to come off, but I guess you have to kind of reach down here. I grabbed some tubing wrenches, so we'll see if we can get this off of here. But yeah, this is just like, what? How do you even? Yeah, I'll figure it out. Now the control board has been removed from the back of this, but I don't know if the power has been disconnected or not. Oh, I guess I did install a disconnect switch under the hood. Can I get to that right now? I don't think I can get to it where the van is parked, so I'll just be careful and uh, cut the wires. Okay, so I've got the two motors off. I was gonna try and get these bars as well, but if you notice, we can get to this bolt, but this one, is like inside the body. I think they fished up through here or something. I'm unfortunately not gonna worry about that because um, yeah, that, that seems like a lot of work. But anyways, got both of them off of here. 
and I think we're gonna call that good. Um, just have to get the rest of my junk out of here now. <laughs> Okay, made it back. Um, gonna have to make another trip out to the van to get everything, because a lot of the stuff that's in there needs to go to the warehouse, and I don't really have a lot of storage space here. So I'll probably go back tomorrow or probably Thursday, since I'm headed out to the warehouse for the live stream anyways. But uh, yeah, I got an interesting phone call back from my medical provider in regards to that ambulatory only clinic thing. Apparently the main manager was out on maternity leave for a few months. She just got back to find the complaints and two different times now that I've been turned away from that clinic and diverted to the ER because they don't want to help people in wheelchairs. Apparently staffing issues or something. And she told me, well, that's 100% false. We have a lift. We have people that are trained to do it. So I guess they're going to do a retraining of a bunch of the employees there or something and make sure this doesn't happen again. But yeah, it was a little bit weird how everyone was telling me, oh yeah, ambulatory only, that's how it is. So anyways, good that I guess something's finally coming of that and it'll help out me and other people in the future. But anywho, um, yeah, that's all I got for now. Not sure if anything's coming next, but we shall see. Okay, we have our heat pump air conditioner unit here. This is one of those combo units that can run either direction, so you can get hot or cold air out of it. It is one of the single tube versions, which means it pulls air from inside through the evaporator or condenser, depending on which mode it's operating in, and pulls that outside. But it uses the air that's in here to do that. They do still technically work, but I, yeah, I don't know, I'll figure it out. I, I just plugged it in earlier and did some testing to see how much power it pulls. It looks like this thing is right around 900, 980 watts, something like that. I've upgraded my electrical feed, so it will be able to handle this. I'll just have to make sure we don't go over 1500 watts with everything else combined in here. So when this is running, I'll probably have to run the fridge and stuff on the inverter with the batteries and then recharge overnight or something. So I've been trying to figure out the best way to ventilate this thing outside because it's got like a six inch pipe on the back of it and it moves a pretty hefty amount of air. I was thinking originally that I might be able to share this vent and put some sort of diverter valve down there. But then I realized this thing is gonna be blowing lots of hot, humid air and I don't wanna feed it down underneath there where the inverter and everything is. So I've got two options, I think. The first one, I believe what I might do is just set this thing up here on the floor right under this and make some sort of a cover that I can put over this. Or maybe I could just poke it up through the roof. I guess it'll depend on how hot it is and how much cooling I get out of that thing. But I think I can just put it on the floor right here and run that tube straight up. The other option is back in the bathroom. There's a little hatch that opens up and in theory I could pipe it out there. But then the tubing that comes out of this thing is like five or six inches in diameter that would kind of interfere with being able to use the bathroom and stuff back there. So I don't know, I'll figure it out. For right now though, I'm just gonna rock this ventilation blower. I think that'll get me by up to about 80 degrees or so outside because there's a lot of thermal mass underneath this thing in the luggage area. And the luggage bays have connection vents that go between them. So the way it's set up right now is it's basically pulling air from the actual equipment mezzanine. I know mezzanine's not the right word. I don't, I don't know what to call it. Mezzanine's usually overhead, but anyways, there's some external uh, outside vents. So it's pulling air from back by the rear axles, pulling it through to the bays and then up into here. In theory, overnight, this thing will get cold and it should be able to retain some of that until late in the afternoon. I don't know, we'll see how it works, but for now, got the air conditioner here. Worst case scenario, I have a generator I can run it on. That's probably getting a little bit extreme, but we're coming into the summer months here and the heat is definitely a thing. It's anything like it was last year and it got up to 115 degrees. Um, yeah, I don't know about all that, but I've got enough stuff to figure this out and make it work. I, I'd rather not cut another hole in the floor, but it is just plywood and I could plug it if I need to. I don't know. <laughs> and quick update on the plumbing situation. A very generous benefactor. I don't know if they want me to say who they are or not. If you're watching this, feel free to leave a comment. 
uh, identifying yourself if you want to. But I've got the plumbing tanks. Well, actually, I'm just about to order them right now. I think I've got the ones I need. I'm double checking one local supplier first because the shipping is a little bit expensive on a giant tank. But I'm running two 65 gallon tanks, one for fresh water, one for gray water. And it'll be about five, 600 pounds worth of water at 65 gallons, which the luggage bay ha will handle just fine, the structure under there. At first I was thinking, oh man, that's gonna be over a thousand pounds. But then I remembered, only one tank is gonna be full at a time. The fresh water will get full, and then either that will get consumed or end up in the gray water tank. So they're just gonna transfer between the two. And 560 pounds, I got to thinking, that's only the equivalent of three to four passengers. So as far as a bus goes, that's nothing. And I can actually put up to, well, safely 14,000 pounds in this thing. We already removed about 3,500 to 4,000 pounds of seats. Everything else I put back in here, I think we're about back to a net equal weight of when it had seats in it. But I don't know much a house weighs, but I'm pretty sure I haven't put 14,000 pounds worth of stuff in here. So anyways, make a progress with all that. Hopefully the next video in theory, we're gonna start working on the plumbing finally. Um, again, I appreciate people that have helped out with a lot of this stuff. Um, I have taken down the Amazon wish list now because I think it's kind of run its course, but I've had people send me the Sureflow pumps that I need, water heater, a bunch of electrical supplies. Uh, someone bought the solar panels, which I actually need to buy two more of those before I install them. Um, I've got the two right now that someone sent and the charge controller, which was awesome, but I need to get two more of those. <laughs> I need to get two more of those before I get everything installed on the roof. But yeah, we're coming along here. Plumbing was the arms getting tired. It always does. There. Eh. Okay, I'm holding it with the other hand. It's upside down. Editor, fix that. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Anyways, plumbing was the last thing to make this place, like, self-sufficient. The bathroom's been working fine. I've got some cool stuff with that worked out. I'm not going to make a video about it because holding tanks, not the most exciting thing. But if you're curious, I did come up with a really awesome solution for managing that tank. <laughs> Actually, there's two of them in here. But anyways, uh, yeah, we'll get running water in here. We'll get the kitchen built. We'll get the bed area and all that stuff done. Really happy. It's been a long process. Uh, this is one of those things where I figured by the time I finally got it done, I would probably have already found a place to live. Don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. The real estate market is still absolutely insane. Um... I think around here, the bubble's probably about to burst, but I don't know. There's a lot of new construction, but then a lot of the projects have been paused because they can't pay to finish the stuff. So I don't know. As per usual, things are weird, but you know, I'm happy. I'm in a good spot. And uh, yeah, it was, it was it my old shop instructor said he was talking about politics inside auto shops. And he's like, well, worst case scenario, if you can't, can't figure out, or you can't figure out how to work with the people that you're working with, words. Anyways, that's why toolboxes have wheels. You can just pack up your stuff and go somewhere else. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna call that good for now. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys Thursday on the live stream. And I've got a selfie stick for my phone. Why don't I use it? I think it's actually right here. Is it here? Yeah. I keep holding my arms up. See, look, this thing's like perfectly designed to hold my phone and I can like, adjust it taller and I've got a good grip on it. I'll put Amazon links for all this stuff down below. Really cool thing though. Okay, see you Thursday. And rainbows on the ceiling apparently. <laughs>